Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be talking about how to set up a mail server on Ubuntu. So you might be thinking, why have I shifted to Ubuntu? Like, why have I shifted to Linux? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, but the first one is, since I've been studying my master's degree, I've realised that uh, Linux needs more attention than what I've been given it. The reason being is because it's becoming, or I think it's becoming more popular, and the reason for that is because uh, it's, you know, it's cross, it's more friendly with cross-platform to start with, and that seems to be the way a lot of software development is going. The second reason it's cheaper. So if you if you've got a VPS in the cloud, which let's face it, that's that's how everything's going. If you've got a VPS and you've got a Windows VPS, maybe Server 2022 or something like that. It might be costing you, it might start from about 15 to 20 pounds a month, which I think is probably about fair. Whereas if you have a Linux server, you're looking at paying about two to three pounds a month. So it's substantially cheaper. The other thing is that um, with the way software development is going, being more cross-platform and stuff, it doesn't hurt to be more aware of a different way of thinking uh, and a different way of working. And Linux for me is very different because everything's a file and there seems to be a huge focus on the command line rather than user interface. And the benefit of this is that um, it seems to be a hell of a lot more efficient. So instead of having to update um, graphical user interfaces and stuff, um, it seems to be a lot more lean and uh, there are of course benefits to this. The downside is that in my opinion Linux is not very user friendly. Um, but then if you're aware of the commands and how to use the command line then I imagine it probably is very user friendly. Anyway, getting to the point. So I'm going to make this mail server, well no, I'm going to make this uh, little server, this Ubuntu server, into a mail server. I'm going to show you how easy it is. So to start with, there's something very important that I need to go over. And that's that if you're dealing with Linux, you need to be more aware of what's going on in the background. With Windows, uh, with a Windows Server, I can just install HMail Server on it. I can do some configuration, and it's done. The thing's finished. With Linux, it's more complicated than that, and it kind of forces you to understand how things are working. But let's crack on. So these are the the key things you need to know. So an MUA, which is a mail user agent, you would probably call it a uh, an email client like Thunderbird. Okay. You've got an NTA, which is a mail transfer agent, which is something you're probably not going to be aware of if you're only used to Windows. So I'm going to be using something called Postfix. I'll, I'll mention more about that in a minute. There's MDA, which is a mail delivery agent, which I'm going to be using Dovecot. Again, if you're used to Windows, you're probably not going to know about that. And then, of course, you've got uh, another client on the other end. So if we just follow this through now, we've got somebody sending an email. It goes to the NTA. The MTA actually gets the email and does something with it. So it listens on port 25 and potentially another port and it does something with the email. So it gets it and it does something. The NDA, the NDA is a mail delivery agent. So the job of the MDA is to get the received email and to deliver it to someone or deliver it to something or organize it in some way and allow the organization of the email and also it deals with the MUA, which is Thunderbird in this case, uh, which wants to see emails, uh, it wants to be able to see the organization of those emails and stuff like that. So I guess you could say there are four stages. And of course the MUA, it can also send the email, which goes to the MTA, which repeats and repeats. So why, have I, why do I mention this in this video? The thing is, in Linux, you need to be aware of how it works. Otherwise, you can't you can't install it. You don't, wouldn't know what to do. Now, in a nutshell, we need to install the MTA and we need to install the MDA. The MTA is going to get the email, and the MDA is going to sort out uh, or organise the mail. So, with Windows, you could install something like HMail Server, and it does all of this. In Linux, it doesn't work that way. So in Linux, we're going to install Postfix and Dovecot, and then we're going to go from there. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got Ubuntu here. The first thing is we need to right click and then go to open in terminal. Everything's about the terminal in, uh, in Linux. Now, um, so the first thing we want to do is to install Postfix. We also need to look at the uh, the firewall as well. I'll do the I'll do Postfix first and then firewall later on. So sudo uh, apt get no not apt get apt install Postfix. So what this is basically saying is install Postfix. Okay, just uh, say OK, go to local only in this case, OK, OK. We'll wait for this to install, it shouldn't take too long. So the next thing we want to do after this is installed, there you go, it's installed now. We want to see if it's running, which it should be, it says here no, nothing needs to be restarted, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if it's running. So we want to do sudo service post fix status. Okay. If you get something like that, it's good news. Um, so I don't know. You see, this is a bit weird. You you sort of expect that you're going to press enter or something, but it doesn't work that way. So press Control and C, and it brings you back to the console. That's something I learned about Linux, it's a bit weird. Um, okay, so what have we done so far? We've installed Postfix, and uh, we've checked that it's on. Now the next thing we're gonna do is test it. So I'll open another another terminal. So we've got two terminals now. <coughs> and now we want to test it. So to test it, we're gonna use Telnet. So Telnet localhost, which means itself, the PC that you're on at the moment. Um, we want to test port 25. Now, the email comes through to our port 25. That's that's how it comes through. That's the the port for SMTP. Port 25. Well, the insecure port anyway. So we want to say tell that local host, which means let's have a chat with uh, local host on port 25, which is Postfix. And it says connected. Okay, we're good to go. Now we'll say. hello um, and it returns a bunch of codes that's good now we want to say mail from um, who, sh who should be from test at test dot com and then press enter receive recipient to um, right now this is a bit weird so it has to be somebody who's uh, registered on this PC. Now, in my case, it's Anthony. If you try something else, it'll say no, apart from root, I think, but keep it easy, Anthony. So whatever the user is over here, use that here. So we seek to Anthony at localhost. Receipt to Anthony at localhost. Now it says, okay, now you wanna write data. Subject and test, and then the body goes in here. So hello, and then press enter, and then a full stop, and enter. Right now, so what we've done so far, we've installed Postfix. We've connected to it on uh, Telnet port 25, which is correct. Then we've basically constructed an email over Telnet, and we've sent it to Postfix. And it, we've got a message back here saying it's queued. Um, now, at this point here, we, we could do with seeing where it is. Now, I could probably guess where it is. Oh, there we go. That's why it's doing that. Okay, you could probably guess. Um, uh, it would probably be, I don't know, var maybe, mail. Oh, oh there you go. There it is. So, open that. And there's the email, right? So it's worked. However, <clears throat> we need to go a bit further now. So, so we've installed Postfix, which is the MTA, and we've tested that it's working, and it is working, so everything's good. 
Now we need something so that we can, uh, well, we need Dovecot basically. Uh, we need to implement IMAP and POP3 or one or the other. So we need to do a similar sort of thing. So sudo apt install dovecot imapd um, dovecot pop3. So sudo apt install dovecot imapd dovecot pop3 d. And again, say so yes to that. And that should install. So just to be clear, this is going to um, organise the email and attempt to deliver it to, to people. Um, okay, so again, we need to check that it's it's running, which it will be. Um, sudo service, but obviously if it's not, then we'd be wasting our time to go into the next stage. Sudo service dovecot status. Yeah, that's fine. Control and C there to go back to the console. Okay, so that's installed. Now, over here, we want to do the same the same thing. So, let's say Telnet. Oh, well, we're still in Telnet here. I'd like to close this Telnet session and do it, do it again. So, I've just typed in quit, connection closed. Okay, I'll, I'll prefer to restart it. So, Telnet, localhost, 143. So, um, IMAP is port 143. Tell that localhost 143. Okay, and we're alright there. So, A login. And the username is, in my case, Anthony. And then the password, which in my case is Anthony. Very strong password. Okay, logged in. Now, let's see. B select inbox. Unseen one. Okay. Okay, this is good. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. C list. No children. Okay, that's fine. And then we'll log out. E log out. <coughs> Connection closed. Right. So at this point now, we've installed the... Uh, MTA and we've tested it. Now we've installed the MDA and we've tested that. It seems to be working. Um, now, but the best thing to do now is to check Thunderbird um, and to check it for real life. So I'm going to go to Thunderbird now and I'll try to set this up so this might not be so easy. Anthony at localhost. The password is going to be Anthony. Uh, now this m might say no actually. Let's configure manually. So the host name is localhost. And the port should be 143. 143. What's, what's going on there? 143. The outgoing server is port 25. Port 25, that should be okay. Let's retest that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and that's fine. Checking password. Right, I thought it would do this. Uh, so, what's probably happened here is that it's probably given me a different password. Yeah, wrong username and password. So, right, bear with me a minute. I've got to find out how to find this password. All right, so uh, after about five, ten minutes of messing about, I found out that it's actually something simple. There's some simple problem. So, Anthony, let's try again. So, Anthony at localhost. Uh, password, Anthony in this case. Uh, configure manually. Let's get rid of this. The port is uh, 143, auto detect. Now, that's the problem there. It, it can't be Anthony at localhost, it's got to be Anthony. Uh, that's the same, so this is SMTP, it's port 25, retest, and done. 
I'm finished. And there should be an email there, which is the test email. Yeah, there is, right? There it is. So there's our email. Um, now, is there anything else I need to do? Let's check. So let's write. Let's write to Anthony at local host. Test 2. Now, is this going to work? Test 2. Maybe there's something I've not configured, but we'll see. Okay, confirm security exception. Right. Stigfoot is not trusted. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, why not? Why not? Oh, received. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before. Um, when you click accept the security exception, you've got to resend the email. Okay, so that's done. Now, this time, it won't, it won't, it won't do that. Test. No. Anthony at localhost, test 3, test 3, and it should work straight away. There we go. So we've got a very simple, um, very simple email server.